which sense do you fear to lose the most? Please raise your hand if it is your sense of smell, your hearing, or your vision. Yes, like most of you, I am most afraid to lose my vision as well. Unfortunately, given I recently found out that I'm three times more likely to lose my vision once I grow old. I have several cases of so-called age-related macular degeneration in my family. As the name indicates, it usually affects people close to or beyond the retirement age and is the most common retinal disease in the world. The retina, as you of course all know, is this very thin layer of vision cells at the back of your eye. And in the case of AMD, it is blood cells which grow into the central and most important part of your retina. So it works a bit like a chip in a camera, you know, when it degenerates, you go blind, irreversibly. Let me show you how this looks like. My grandfather lost slowly vision in his left eye a few years ago. To stop it, he received monthly medication injected straight into his eye. Did it work? At first, yes. However, over time, it got worse again. He had spent an entire day, every month, drive and get his injection. And still, he did not achieve the outcomes he had hoped for. So, he dropped out of therapy. Of course, this did not help either. Now, he can't drive. He can't read small text. He can't live his life without assistance anymore. Fortunately, he's now back on therapy to prevent at least his second right eye from vision loss as well. In contrast, my grandmother was affected by the same disease and with just a couple of injections per year, she enjoyed good vision for the rest of her life. So how could we have enabled my grandfather to gain the same good results like my grandmother? And in fact, that's not just about my grandparents. The retina was not built to last 100 years. So this will affect all of us once we grow old. There are currently 350 million people living in this world which suffer from vision-threatening retinal diseases. And by 2030, there will be 100 million more due to demographic change and other factors like diabetes. Out of those 350 million people, 75 million require immediate treatment, now, today, to stop them from going blind. Some of them might gain very good visual results with just a few injections per year, just like my grandmother. But some of them will get up to 10 injections per year and still suffer from vision loss, like we have seen with my grandfather. He's also a very typical case. One out of two people drops out of therapy within the first two years, which means, as we have seen, they go blind. In Europe and the US, two out of three people who go blind suffered from exactly those kinds of retinal diseases. And by 2050, there will be an additional 1 billion elderly people living outside the EU and the US. So this is now turning into a global issue. The direct healthcare spending for coping with the consequences of this. So let's take the aforementioned AMD. It is estimated that people who had AMD and suffer from vision loss are costing the healthcare system 
400 billion dollars every year. 400 billion dollars every year, which we, in case we had a perfect therapy, wouldn't spend otherwise. So how can we prevent the silent pandemic? There are three innovations which together enable a solution. Before 2006, there was no effective treatment against AMD. Since then, the first generation of drug therapy has saved millions from vision loss, true vision saver. However, as we have seen with my grandparents, it's currently one size fits all approach. It does not work for everyone. Now, there's a second generation of drugs which promises higher effectiveness at less injections. But again, this is only for patients who have a very long therapy history. And as we just learned, one out of two drop out early of therapy. So they will never benefit from those new drugs. The second trend is better retinal imaging. Traditionally, ophthalmologists use 2D imaging. So this is basically a photo taken of the back of your eye. Now, 3D imaging has replaced 2D. It works a bit like ultrasound for your eye. For the first time ever, retina specialists can see what happens inside your retina. They can differentiate between more subtypes of retinal diseases and they can follow, assess, and discuss treatment results objectively. So 3D imaging has become the new gold standard in retinal diagnostics. And there is a third and maybe most powerful trend. After years of engineers like myself pushing digital technology onto doctors, Doctors finally turned the tide. A group of ophthalmologists from Münster teamed up with AI experts, like my co-founder Radko, to solve their most pressing clinical needs. AI for them does not stand for artificial intelligence. We use the American Medical Association's definition of AI as augmented intelligence. Augmented meaning it enhances the human capabilities rather than replacing it. This led to a radically different approach compared to all the great other AI solutions in ophthalmology who are already out there. Unlike 81% of all other solutions, we do not focus on screening. We focus on late-stage retinal diseases. Unlike 85% of all other solutions, we do not use 2D imaging we use the mentioned 3D imaging. And unlike any other solution out there, we focus on the most costly, risky, and difficult to make decision that there is for retina specialists. What is the optimal therapy for each and every patient? So this involves questions like, how much treatment do they need, when, and which kind of drug? This question can currently not be answered by any retina specialist out there in early therapy. But the question is, how do we train an AI if we don't know the answer ourselves? Let me finally tell you what we did and how we did it. We developed a medical AI platform that connects all stakeholders in retinal therapy. So our solution breaks down the data barriers and information barriers between patients, physicians, imaging providers, pharma companies, and payers. Our system, our AI, has learned from real-world data sets collected over years and years and curated by world-leading ophthalmologists, as well as the most recent randomized controlled trials. It also integrates directly into the software of those 3D imaging devices. And it provides its insights in an easy and explainable way. To sum up, we provide clinical decision support for retinal therapy within one click at the point of care. At 
every point of care. But how does AI work? Well, our AI basically has seen more patients than any retina specialist can see in a lifetime. It has seen patients from all across the globe and from all different walks of life. It has learned from every single image ever taken of those, uh, of those patients over years and years. And it has seen how they react to treatment. Our AI looks for patterns that also ophthalmologists would look for. But our AI can also identify patterns in those images that no human being can see. Like, for instance, if this is a retina scan of a man or a woman, no humans can tell the difference just by looking at the image. In our case, we trained the AI to look for patterns that this is a very treatment-thirsty eye. Treatment-thirsty meaning this eye requires a lot of injections. Because of this, the eye can predict how the eye will develop, the disease, and how it will react to different kinds of treatments. This again enables the ophthalmologist to come up with a personalized therapy schedule for each and every patient. And the patients benefit, besides of course better outcomes, from knowing when and how often they need to come in. Let's look at a concrete example how this might look like. A typical um, therapy in 2025 might look like this. My grandfather visits his ophthalmologist. They do a routine 3D retina scan. She looks at the image and directly sees new disease activity. So she knows he needs more treatment. The eye report now confirms to her the presence of the new disease activity, how much it has changed, and it also predicts how this will progress in the future. It predicts that my grandfather will require a lot more injections over the coming months and even years. So the doctor, she counsels my grandfather to switch to a new, more potent treatment option. Usually, because it's a new drug, this requires pre-approval by the health insurance. However, thanks to this automatically generated AI report, uh, this is automatically granted because it serves as a second opinion. The doctor also generates a report for my grandfather, which shows how the disease has been affecting his eye and which schedule he is on now in the future. With this, he can book his appointments in advance. So unlike in pre-AI times, he knows exactly when he needs to come in for a checkup or injection for the next year. And when I visit him the next time, we can check out his report together. To close, I would like to stress once again that algorithms can only answer very specific questions. So as we learned today, we should ideally ask questions to the AI that we as humans do not know the answer to yet. This way, it truly improves the standard of care. To paraphrase a famous radiologist, AI will not replace ophthalmologists, but ophthalmologists who use AI will replace those who don't. We delivered the first three studies involving more than 100 doctors, 1,000 patients, and 10,000 retinal scans to test our solution. We are supported by an alliance of doctors, medical associations, pharma companies who provide data as well as money to us. So our team of engineers and doctors together, they are striving to now put this solution into the hands of all ophthalmologists out there. AI by doctors, for doctors. Our goal is to save 1 million additional people from blindness by 2030. So if you want to join our cause, please reach out to me. We need more brains as well as data from all across the globe. Together, we can also overcome the silent pandemic of retinal blindness. Thank <laughs> you.